Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm going to show you how to extend complex images in Photoshop. Now, a couple of videos ago, I told you a trick to trick the content aware scale and stretch images in a way that it wouldn't look like it's stretched and still you extend the image. And you can check out this video right here. But there's a problem with that technique. It doesn't work well with detailed stuff. Any Anywhere there's something complex, it just doesn't work. For example, if you have trees, if you have buildings, you cannot stretch them, right? So what to do in those scenarios? That's what this video is all about. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in the mystical magical world of Photoshop. And if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. So here's the first example. Let's say you want to post it to Instagram and you don't want to crop it. So if you want to make it square, so press C for the crop tool. Now, this is important. This is what a lot of people miss. Make sure you uncheck this, delete cropped pixels, uncheck that. What happens is uncheck it forever. If you keep it checked and if you wanna make it smaller or something, something like this, and if you hit enter, it will delete those areas. You cannot get these areas back, right? So let's go back. Make sure you keep it unchecked forever. When you first install Photoshop, that should be one of the first things you need to do. Okay, so select the crop tool and then make sure this is unchecked and you want to make it square. So I'm going to select the ratio to square and hold the alt or option. Just extend it, hit enter or return. Now there's no way we can stretch this because there are stones and trees and mountains. We cannot. So here is what we do we select the magic wand tool right here. Make sure the tolerance is high, 32 is fine. And then you click on it, it will select that area. If it also selects something inside the image, make sure you decrease the tolerance. Now, we also wanna select this area as well. So hold the shift, it changes into a plus, click there. So both these areas are now selected. Now keep in mind, I'm using Photoshop CC 2019. If you're using a previous version of Photoshop, make sure you make a copy of the background layer and then proceed with it. Because there's no way you can have content aware fill on a new layer. So go to edit and then I'm gonna select content aware fill from here. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, you would go to fill and then choose content aware fill. So let's select content aware fill. A whole new dialog box shows up. Now, as you can see, this will do a pretty good job, I suppose. Don't look at those lines, those will be fine. These are just processing right now. Now, you can try in different color adaptation, rotation adaptation settings, but this is perfect. Well, let's go ahead and try high, let's see what it does. Does it make the image better? or worse. Yes, it does make the image a little better. So I'm fine with this. Now this is important. Have a look at this. Output to new layer. This is one of the great features of the new content of AFL that it allows you to output the fill-ins to a new layer. So make sure you have new layer selected right here and hit OK. Have a look. So the extra areas are on a new layer, non-destructive. Press Ctrl or Command D to let go of the marching ants. Now here is an important step. Have a look. Have a look at the patterns right here. It has created certain patterns this side as well. See the bump? It has been repeated again and again. You want to take that away. If you keep it this way, it's going to give the audience a sign that you have just used quantitative fill or you have just cloned it out. We don't want that to happen. All right. So create a new layer on top of it. Click on the new layer button. Use any of your favorite tools to break the pattern. So in this case, I'm going to use the regular healing brush tool. Make sure the sample is current and below and zoom in. You just want to break the pattern. So hold the alt or option, click to take a sample and then just I'm going to paint right here. I'm going to take a sample from there. I'm going to paint right there. Whoops, I painted a little extra. Make sure it's well aligned. Take a sample from here, paint right there. Just a little bit here and there will be enough. See how we break the break broke the pattern over there. Now you can also take a sample from the outline of this area and maybe just fill it over here. So you can do a lot of stuff in this side as well. As we can see the bump, you'll take a sample from here and maybe fill it right there. Have a look. It's better. Take a sample from here, maybe fill it right there. Take a sample from here, make it plain. This is fine. Looks better. Now if you think these are too many. So you can take a sample from here, remove one. 
I don't know what those are, but let's remove them anyway. Okay, this is fine. Let's zoom in right there. Have a look. This has been repeated again. So we're going to take a sample from here and just replace it easily like that. And the goal here is just to break the pattern. Whenever you use the content of air fill, you create a pattern. We have to break those. Just erase this, erase it here as well. Those are already looking strange. We didn't want that. So let's totally erase it. We don't need that anyway. Okay, that's fine. Let's zoom out. Have a look. It's perfect. So here's the before. Here is the after. It looks so realistic, so amazing. Let's jump into example number two. Now, this is going to be a little more challenging because have a look at the background. It's very complex. It has a lot of buildings, boats and stuff. How do we extend it? Let me show you how to do that. Press C for the crop tool. And then I'm going to just click on clear and let's extend it. You can hold the alt or option to extend from both the sides equally. I'm going to extend it, let's say this much. For example, you are creating a cover for your website. This would be necessary and hit enter. Always make sure this is unchecked. Delete crop pixels. Now you would do the same over here. We will use the magic wand tool. Select this area, hold the shift key, select the other area. And if you want, if you don't want to see those lines in the preview, you can also extend it. So you can easily go to select, modify, expand, and then you can expand by, let's say five pixels. So it kind of digs in, have a look. So you won't see any of those lines anymore. Now, we will use the same edit, content aware fill. Now this time you'll see it won't do a pretty good job of it. Have a look at it. It's not perfect, not so nice. Have a look here, it's not very nice. So what we want the content aware fill to do is to be able to sample from this area and make it bigger, make it larger over here. So we want to enable scaling. So just make sure you check scaling for this case. Let's see what it does. I hope it will do pretty good over here. We don't want any rotation. Wow, it did a pretty good job. Have a look at it, it's, it's great. Now you can try color adaptation, different values. Let's choose high. Let's see what it does. High is good. We can also try very high. No, very high is too bad. We're gonna choose high. That's fine. Now, once you're happy with this, hit okay. So this looks fine, but there's a problem. Let's first press Control or Command D to let go of the marching ants. Have a look at this. Yellow building is repeated twice. So it obviously looks like you just cloned it and made it larger. So instead of cloning any other building, placing it over here, we will try some other trick. And this is a very special trick to deceive the audience, to deceive the viewer. It's very special. Have a look at this. All we need to do is to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. What if we simply change the color of this building? It won't look copied anymore, right? So simply, first of all, select the yellows. So click on the hand tool. We want to select the yellows over there and take the hue and the saturation all the way to the right. As you can see, it's not very uh, accurate. It's harsh. So we will expand the range like that and bring the saturation and the hue to normal and then you can change it. Let's change the hue. Let's make it, you want to make it green, blue. What do you want to make it? Let's just change it slightly. You want to make it a little red, maybe decrease the saturation a little bit, just a touch and a little red, just like that. Now we only want to affect this area. So we click on the mask. Press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush and simply paint on that area. That's it. So this building, I want it to be red. And I also want this area to be red. Okay. Now we are done working with that building. We need to work with this building as well. So simply make a copy of this use saturation adjustment layer. Press Ctrl or Command J. Now in this case as well, with the mask selected, take the brush. Now erase this area. Select black as the foreground color and then paint on that area to make the mask completely black again. Now we will attack just this building. So press X to make the foreground color white and paint on just this building. Just that. Now open up the properties of the hue saturation. Click on this symbol to open up the properties. Now do not do anything in the master. Have a look at which one we had changed. We had changed the yellows, right? So let's change it again. 
we're going to change it to how about blue blue is fine we can increase the lightness a little bit and maybe decrease the saturation i'm trying to make this blue like that blue this is fine let's zoom out and have a look now have a look at the deception it just doesn't look like it's cloned great you can also change the color of the boats and you can change stuff here as well. As you can see, the windows are repeated again and again. You can change the colors of them. Also, you can create a new layer on top of them. And you can use the same thing. Use the regular healing brush tool. And just take a sample from here and just paint on that area. Take a sample and just paint on that area. Just fill it. And again, it's already blurred out. So it, you don't have to be accurate over there. Okay, so that's how to do it very easily. Again, this is something which is repeating so i'll take a sample from here here actually and then just paint over there just like that simple things like that break the pattern now let's have a look at example number three in this case if i extend it press c and if i try to like make it a little longer like that there is no way we can use the content of fill because there's not a lot of places to sample from right so what do we do? Let me teach you one more method to do it. You can use the rectangular marquee tool, okay? Just select that area from the corner, from the left corner. Once you do that, press Ctrl or Command J. Now, Ctrl or Command T, move it. It's not matching at all. Wait, right click on it and choose flip horizontal. Now, once you do that, we need to just bring it in just a touch and then hit enter or return. Now, it does look like a pattern. We will take care of that later. Make one more copy of layer one. Press Ctrl or Command J. Ctrl or Command T. Just bring it right there. Just like that. And do the same thing. Right click on it. Flip horizontal. Now, this time you can stretch it a little bit. A little bit to the left as well hit enter or return and you're good to go now you can do the same thing on the right hand side select the rectangular marquee tool it's gonna be a little difficult on the right hand side select layer zero again control or command J control or command D bring it right there just control or command T I just hit enter control or command T right click on it and choose flip horizontal again okay you can bring it a little inside just a touch make a copy of this control or command j control or command t bring it again over there right click on it flip horizontal great but as you can see this is looking great but there's a pattern so all we need to do at this point is break the pattern that's it create a new layer with the help of the regular healing brush tool, as you can see over here, we have a pattern. We have to break them. Take a sample from here and just simply paint over there. Take a sample from here, paint over there. Just jumble it up and you'll be fine. So we broke the pattern. Here as well, we can easily break the pattern by, let's say, let's take a sample from here and maybe paint over there. Something like that. Let's take a sample from here, maybe paint over there. This is looking a little crazy, I know. Let's take a sample from here. This is great. Now we can make it a line like that. See how we are simply breaking the pattern. We can take a sample from here and easily paint it over there. Okay, so that area, the pattern is broken. You can also play with the clouds, take a sample from here and just Paint it randomly in random areas. This is fine. Have a look at this. There's a pattern over here. So we'll just paint. Now this is looking a little crazy. Let's try again. Take a sample and paint a little bit right there. Okay. Now we can do the same over here as well. So take a sample and from here and paint it right there. This is fine. Take a sample, paint. You can easily break the pattern over here as well. Take a sample paint maybe you can take a sample from here and continue there take a sample from there and continue here just make it random and then later you can just work on it to make it cleaner 
Now, sometimes what you might have to do, you might have to rotate the sample. So as you can see in this case, I want to rotate the sample and bring it over here. So you can use the clone stem tool, all right? Make it bigger, hold the Alt or Option, click on to take a sample. Now you need to rotate it. So take a sample, we need to rotate this. So to rotate it, it's very easy. You can go to Windows and then Clone Source. You can rotate it from here. You can also use Shortcut. So we can rotate it by just taking, as you can see, it's rotated right now. You can easily paint, see, rotate it very easily. You can just rotate this as well, rotate it to the right a little bit and easily done. You can also do it one more time. Let's reset it and join the line. Easy, that was very easy to do. And that's how you do it. All you have to keep in mind is to always break the pattern. Use different techniques, different ideas of your own to break the pattern and you'll be fine. So the first technique that we used was using the content aware. You can use the old content aware, you can use the new content aware, that's absolutely upon you. And then it's important that you create a new layer to break the pattern. The second method we used was this one, it was mirroring. We just selected an area just like that. We copied it and we flipped it. So we flipped this right here. Again, we made a copy of this, we flipped this again. So just constant flipping will fill your area, but it can create patterns. So beware of that. And you might have to create a new layer to remove them by using the regular healing brush tool, the clone stamp tool, or anything of your choice. You can also copy a patch from an area and just paste it. Just break the pattern and you'll be fine. So that's all for this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixim Perfect free for everybody forever. Thank you for all your support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.